can you tell me a little bit about your role, um, about your school, what you're doing? Sure. So um, I am at Silver Creek Public School, and we are the first language-friendly school in Canada. Um, we have been a language-friendly school for three years now, I think or it's going on four years um, officially. Um, I am the teacher librarian and I also teach ESL at the school. And so we're a K-5 school and we have about 320 kids, K-5. to five. Large school. Uh, and yeah. ESL is uh, English as a second as a second language. Yeah. And you made some uh, great lessons, two lessons. Can you tell me uh, something about the, the first? Sure. So um, one of the first ones we did, uh, and we actually did it as a team. Um, so my colleagues, Marcy Dunnell and Karen James and I, um, kind of as the first year that we were um, becoming a language friendly school, we decided that we would um, go from class to class, the three of us who are in the support roles and facilitate a lesson with each class that was building a language uh, policy in the class. Um, and it was, I think, a really important lesson to do because it was hard enough as teachers to change that mindset to say, like, no, you can speak whatever language, like your home language, and it's, it's helpful. We had been used to at the time, or I should speak for myself, I had been used to at the time encouraging kids to speak English, to learn English. Um, and so this was kind of the one where we were introducing to kids the concept of why it's important to have a first language and also to feel comfortable and know that they can use their first language here in school in Canada. That's nice. And so what, what did you do with the, with the kids? Yeah, so basically what we did, um, we went in and we had our um, learning goals ready for them to let them know um, what we were going to be doing. We used... Um, mentor texts um, and had the classes um, discuss what language is, how language helps us. Um, and they got to jot their, their ideas down on paper. We jot, Some of the lessons actually was COVID, so we did them online. So we had jam boards up, some of them we would do it on um, paper on the easel and kind of take their ideas of what is language and why is it important to us. Um, so that was kind of the start of our activity. Um, and then I branched off into a quick discussion, um, age appropriate, of course, on what human rights is and introducing the fact that having language, your first language and being able to use that first language is a fundamental human right. Um, so we did that. And then the kids got to work in small groups independently if they wanted to. I'm not a big one on forcing kids to work in groups if they're not comfortable working in groups. Um, I kind of use that voice and choice piece. Um, so they completed a graphic organizer on um, why language is important um, and how it helps us. Um, and then what we did was um, eventually we came up almost with kind of a charter of rights for each classroom on how they can use language and when they're allowed to use the language, which is essentially whenever they need to or choose to. Um, and I think that it was just important, like it gave kids that permission to realize that this is something they can do, you know, that they, that they are comfortable. It's part of their identity. It's who they are. Um, and I think that we kind of gave them permission to know that it's okay and it's welcome here. So how did they respond to that? I think they loved it. Like the kids that I worked with really um, seemed to grasp onto it and understand it. And they were very kind of excited to know that they get to use their first language when they want to. Um, and also I found that they were very curious because in a couple of the classes, um, especially with the younger kids, the grade ones that I went into, they were very excited and all of a sudden wanted to share their first language with other people. So they, you know, like they were getting excited hearing other people's language and how they would say hello versus how this one would say hello. And so I think that it, it, it went over very well. Like I think the kids really, did enjoy it. And I think now that we're three years post doing this lesson and, you know, doing the charters um, with the classes, um, I think that the kids are very comfortable here knowing that they're allowed to use their first language and that it benefits them and how to advocate for themselves if somebody's telling them that they can't. You created this lesson also for other teachers to use this? 
Yeah, uh, so um, with Marcy, Karen, and I, we created it together. Um, we chose um, a mentor text. I think it was Marcy who found our mentor text, and it was uh, what Seda said, or the when Seda when Seda arrived is the name of the mentor text. Um, but since I found about five or six mentor texts that are in the lesson plans that all work beautifully with with that lesson. Oh, that's great. Uh, and do you have any tips for other teachers who might want to uh, use your lesson? Honestly, I think it's a pretty straightforward lesson. And I think that you can make it into whatever you want. You could use this lesson easily in a high school, right? You could get more into that fundamental understanding of human rights and why they're important and, and that sort of thing. So you can kind of take it in so many different directions. Um, yeah, I think you can. Yeah, that's great. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Lost my train of thought. Yeah, it's great that uh, teachers can have their own uh, their own way with it and adapt it to. Yeah, them. and I think it's important too because if you want teachers to be able to be comfortable going in and giving a lesson like this, they need to be able to change and adapt it how they need it because they know their group of kids, they know what they're trying to learn, they know where their kids are at in the process. So I think it's kind of nice to have more or less a generic lesson like that, that you can then take it and morph it to what you need it to be in your own classroom. Yeah, 